Hello, you're welcome to Christian School of Basics. My name is Shegun Oduye. In this class, we are going to be having five levels. Level 1, Level 2, Level 3, Level 4, Level 5. Each of the levels have specific courses that you are going to be taking. And so we are going to be starting with the 100 level. And in this level, we'll be looking at essentials of Christian doctrines, what we believe as Christians. One of the challenges with a lot of people is that many people are Christians and they do not know what they believe and why they believe what they believe. Because in Christianity, it is all about believing. It's all about believing. So once the foundation of what you believe is wrong, then there will be something wrong essentially in your Christian journey, your Christian work. One of the uh, reasons why a lot of people have challenges as they grow as Christians, uh, struggling with their Christian life, their relationship with God, is that the fundamentals of what they believe have some erroneous impute. And so what we'll be doing through this academy is to help Christians grow, navigate through systematic teaching that will help you to be able to understand what you believe and why you believe what you believe uh, according to the scriptures. So we'll start with foundation of a basic 101. And basic 101 will simply be dealing with the origin and purpose of man. The origin and purpose of man. And it's important to look at Genesis chapter 1 and get the origin the purpose of man. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. So that established the fact that the creator of all things in heaven and earth is God. And so verse 26, the Bible says, after God has created several things, and then by the time we get to verse 26, the Bible says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Please take note of those two things. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over all, over the cattle and over all the earth and over, all, over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Wow, amazing. And God blessed them and God said, unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. This gives us the foundational essence of man because again when you really want to understand a particular to the root of it, get to the foundations of it, that's why in university or higher institution whenever you are studying a particular course it is important to first do the introduction to that particular course and so wait there's no way we really with our beliefs without getting to the very foundation of humanity and so here genesis the bible says god is the creator of human beings and so god have the right to work but we also can Our own in our own God they actually hello God let us make man in our own image that talks about God the creator the father God the son the Holy Spirit let us make man in our own image then he went forward and said let let us make that in our own image after our own likeness now words are very important. Image. The first one, which is image, talks about physical representation of that which is invisible. So God was simply saying, let us make man to be our physical representation of horse who is invisible. And you remember that Jesus speaking in the book of John said, Spirit, and they that worship him was worship him in spirit and in truth. So God was making man to be physical representation of that which is invisible. Visible, which is great and this will help you to understand 
one of the fundamental reasons why is idolatry, particularly idolatry that re, that, that requires that man will bow down images because man is made in the image of the invisible spirit god and other idols images they were the images of invisible demonic spirit and so when a man, man idol what it connotes in the spirit is that you are saying you are bringing god to bow down <laughs> do you get logic now okay good so god made man in his image so the original intention of god is that as you will be representative of the god who is invisible then he said after our likeness likeness there talks about character quality the same nature so god made man to have the nature of so in other words if man is supposed to represent god on the earth he is physical but he's representing someone that is invisible and then he's supposed to do that in the character quality of god now this will help you understand when we get to that point when we are talking about jesus who now came to become the second i mean the the, the, the last adam the second man you'll find out that jesus typified all of them practically he came and he said the father is in me and i am in the father he said he came to represent the father then he said the son can do nothing except that we see the father do you know everything he did was like he came to represent the father he came to represent the invisible god but it was in the cloth of man that's the way man was designed that was the original intention in the heart of god then you also see something further down in that um chapter 1 verse 28 well, let's first look at verse 27 you know he said god made them male and female so which means it's it's not gender bias and that's why when you now get to the new testament and the bible talks about there's neither male or female in christ men are not different from women because we are both men to represent god we are both created in the image of god yes our approaches might be different but in basic essence we are both representing god then in, in 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 verse 28 then he, he said something which actually expresses how man is supposed to live his life he said be fruitful replenish the heart subdue those are five levels of expression so god created man to represent god in the character quality of god but man will do that in five levels of expression number one being the fruitful simply means to bring out what is what's on the inside of you to interact with the environment and produce results that will be beneficial to uh, 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 to the environment both men and other so god puts something in man and that's the way you are we, we are the, we are created because there are potential on the inside that forms the dna code of your expression you know god said Let's create man after I mean our own image after our likeness. So man is supposed to represent God in the character quality of God. So there are essential qualities that God has put in man. For example, when you talk about uh, um, in terms of work, God is the first architect, God is the first builder, God is the uh, 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 first engineer, and all of that. All of those qualities are in God, but He put them in each one of us according to the measure as He des desires. So He designed everybody. With a measure of potentials and gifts and so his desire is that you will bring out what you have on your inside interact with the environment with what you have and produce something that will be beneficial so that's what he meant by being fruitful being fruitful you become fruitful spiritually you become fruitful psychologically you become fruitful socially you bring out something beneficial then he said multiply that means increase the level of your productivity then he went further and said replenish the earth that means occupy space expand take more territory so you may start from one location start from one place but you are expected to expand to spread and all of that to, to gain more ground then he said subdue that means build The environment bring it under control you know. so in order to represent god man will have to find expression in these five levels starting with product, increased product expanded productivity 
then productivity that brings the environment under control and then you get to final stage of dominance where you have control where you have authority and all of that and that's the desire that human beings will do but on top of it is that man is doing all of that to represent God and that's why Jesus when he was going to make it said you are the light of the world we are the salt of the earth so it is through what the works that we do our fruitfulness that men will glorify God who is in heaven so the original intention of God is that you will produce result man will produce result man will produce result and then man will be a blessing and then God will be glorified why because man is actually representing God he wasn't he's not here to represent himself no man was designed to represent himself so when God made the first man Adam, he was designed to represent. Don't forget that. You know we are talking about the origin purpose of God for man. God designed man to represent him in character quality. And God put substance in man. Genesis chapter 7 says God breathed into the nursery of man. When he formed man out of the dust. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nose really the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So inside of man, after forming him from the dust, you remember we just explained the plan or the purpose, the hand of God for creating man. And so God formed man from the dust, then he put something inside man with which man should function and find expression. So when you say man is a living soul, it simply means man became a functioning being. He began to function. Function in the class that God designed him to function. What was the class? But representing God. How does he represent God? He will become fruitful. He will become that's productive. He will be the substance of God inside him. God brought into the nose really the breath of life. That's the substance of God is inside of him. Out of the substance of God inside of him, in character quality, in same likeness, he will bring it out and produce effects. And then he will increase the effect, he will increase the results, and then he will expand to more territories, gain more grounds, then he will bring the earth under control, and finally he will gain dominance and be a person of influence. That was the intention in the heart of God. And guess what? That intention has not left. In fact, when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, the reason why God brought Jesus is to reclaim that intention. Get that at the heart of your mind, that there was a purpose, I mean, there was a purpose in the heart of God for creating man. And it started. In our next class, we'll talk about the fall of man, the sin and the fall of man. But this class, we just wanted to establish that there was a purpose in the heart of God. Man didn't exist, but just didn't uh, come to be by random experiment or by accident. Man was a product of a well thought out idea and concept in the mind of God the Creator. And having made man to be who he should be, there is an expression of how man was intended to give expression to himself. See you in the next class when we talk about the fall of man and sin.